What is up, everybody? 38th favorite dad in the family community, Papa West, Jacob West. Uh, and I am back in TV uh, where I have lost two matches so far uh, with no chance of winning either. Um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be like, hey, person I'm facing because I don't want to spoil it. I'm up to win. You suck at life. Blah, blah, blah. No, I just have a message uh, for the wheel. Lovely wheel from wheeldecide.com, sponsored by whatever uh, little advertisement you get on the side. Um, hey, how you doing, wheel? Um, I just want to say you look very beautiful tonight. Um, you've been doing a great job of fucking me over lately. Um, please, if you have it um, in your, your little wheel heart, that spins ever so fast. Please, please give me a category of a show that I know. One of my three strengths. If you want to lean on Spinner's Choice, that'd be amazing and make me have to decide um, between which show I'd actually like. But please, Mr. Wheel or Mrs. Wheel, gender neutral wheel, whatever you feel like being tonight. Please, please be nice to me. Hello, everybody in the TV Throwdown division and the audience that is watching at home. Elon McKegg, the showman, is back, having only lost one match, going up against J.D. West, who has lost two. Now, am I going to crab talk J.D.? No, because I don't want to. He's a nice guy. I've met with him multiple occasions. He's very nice. He's Papa West for a reason. I'm not a dad. I am merely a person talking to you. JD, hope you have a fun match. And I also hope that the wheel goes and is nice to you as well. Because I want to send out positive vibes. Because I want the wheel to be nice to me too. I feel like if I'm nice to you, it'll give me good karma to land on something I like. I want this to be a fun match. I want this to be a match where both participants can have equal footing. So, JD... I hope that we have a great match. I hope that you have fun, because I know I'm going to have fun. No matter who wins, I just know in the end, it's going to be a great match. All right, folks, we're back. It's another Tuesday, which means it's another TV. And today we have a few singles matches coming your way. These two matches will be uh, able to get some uh, people into uh, the fall tournament, which is coming up real soon which we'll see at the start of September. And, of course, joining me as always, he is Joe Harrison. Joe, how are we doing today? I am doing well. I am excited for this match. Looking at the shows that um, the competitors have picked, it will be an interesting matchup. There's a pretty good variety within it. So it's going to be interesting to see if, um, once again, the strategies coming in, if people focus on their own shows, hoping to land on their strengths, which seems to be a very – um, stable strategy that a lot of people employ, or if they took the time to kind of delve into a little bit of their opponent's strengths, make it to where there's a little bit more on the wheel that they're okay with spinning. Because as we know, the wheel in round two and three tends to like two or three shows the entire night of a match. We don't know why it happens. So it will be interesting to see how this match shakes out. Both of these guys, very cordial, very much just like, I just want to be able to get a win, get into the tournament. So it will be very – it's going to be a, a match that is going to really just be fun to watch and just fun to be a, a part of because we there was no animosity, no bad words being said. Everyone was really respectful for each other. So I'm excited to see you just have a nice, respectful match. That's, that's very true, and especially I know one of these shows is close to your heart. So hopefully if no questions get answered, we don't see any Joe Harrison tears. But with that, let's bring in our competitors. He is first. Uh, Mr. Showman, the showman, Eli McKaig. Eli, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm going to be looking for the fire within me, the air above me, the water around me, and the earth beneath me for strength. Marvel, Disney, no one else is going to remake Knights, Mystic Knights of Tear to Nogue. 
They will Just enjoy the part of your childhood because the time we live in sucks for remakes and reboots. I will remake Mystic Knights of Tiananog if I have to. At least you'll do it right. You'll be the first one. <laughs> and of course, his opponent. He loves it when you call him Big Papa. Papa West, Jacob B. West. How we doing, Jacob? I'm doing all right. Uh, I want to clarify two things real quick. First off, I'm not JD. I'm uh, sorry. We have been on a stream together, uh, so we are not, in fact, the same person. I apologize. Like uh, Brooklyn Vale and Kenneth, whatever Kenneth's last name is. We are two different people. And second off, Eli, thank you for cleaning up your room uh, before this match. Um, I, I, I hope uh, I do not take more of your time uh, so you can get back to playing with your backpack. Oh, look, I need to I be backpack. in... I gotta be in the toy room of my niece because internet is better here. It's really Eli's toy, toy room, but we all know why we're here. We all know what this is. This is the three-round matchup. The rules will be explained for each round as we go in. And, of course, Joe Harrison will explain those with each round. And also to remind both of you, you have your three repeats and your one challenge to get that out of the way. But first... The rules for round number one. Joe, take it away. All right. Round number one is going to work like this. It is, of course, the whiteboard round. You will get eight questions from eight different TV shows. Six of those questions coming from the strength shows provided by, from our competitors. And two coming from two random shows that the writers said, hey, why not? Let's write a question about this. Once a question is read, you will have 15 seconds to write the answer on your whiteboard. Once time is called, we will call on each competitor. And at that time, they will reveal their answer as well as verbalize it. A correct answer gets you a point. Wrong answer, you don't get a point. There is no negative effects in round one other than not getting a point if you answer a question incorrect. With that being said, competitors, are you ready? No, Scoob, are we ready? We're ready. Yeah, I think we're ready. Got to put you over there. there uh, I would have felt like a whiteboard up to fully. You know, make I didn't it, think but... about that. Yeah. We're in the toy room. You you don't have uh th you don't think on the top of your head when you're in your toy room. Exactly. They both seem ready, so let's go into it. I'll take the odds. Joe will take the even. See if his voice breaks. Gentlemen, your first question will come in Spider-Man: The Animated Series. Your first question: Name one of the two voice actresses for Aunt May. I remember watching this show on um, ABC Family because when I grew up, the Fox Kids to ABC Family sale had Joe. It's just happening. I was going to say, I don't think you were born yet for Fox Kids in the early I days. I actually was at the tail end. I was able to watch okay. Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue on Fox Kids. Ah, right before it and ended. And Time Force. We'll go five, four, three, two, one, I guess I'm like New Day, I was there day one-ish, but pens down, let's go to Papa. Uh, absolutely nothing. And Eli. I didn't know, but I put Rosemary Harris, I know she's not me. Also incorrect, we were looking for Linda Gary or Julie Bennett. Oh, yes. All right, your second question comes in, Game of Thrones, what is the name of the Seven Kingdoms capital city. If you could create an eighth kingdom, what would you name it? Tim Smith's big ass kingdom. Stay the fuck out. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, but I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Here's a line. Don't cross it. I have 50,000 arrows up there that will kill you. God. God bless. Five. Four, it's the only places the Dallas Cowboys can succeed in. So. Two. <laughs> one. Hands down. More championships and probably your shitty team. Let's go to Eli first. King's Landing. And Papa. King's Landing. Only Eli gets the point. I am the showrunner. I have the power. You can kiss my ass. So you're Kevin Smith. No, I don't ruin franchises, sorry. Whoa, whoa now. I enjoyed that show. One of the few, only few. <laughs> What's our next show? All right, our next show. Oh, yeah, wait, that is your question. Yes. Ah, shit talking Kevin Smith will get confused. All right, third question comes in Station 19. 
your question. Andy is the daughter of who? You know, just because I know this isn't a question, do you prefer the uh, the show? Do you prefer the Grey's Anatomy or Station Nineteen? I've only seen episodes from each. Like I've seen more with Station Nineteen since I've been doing a lot of writing with it. I like it more because of the, I guess, the firefighting aspect. But <sighs> there, I mean, there. There are people that like the more medical thing with Grey's Anatomy, kind of like how ER was a big success. So it's it's really just a taste of, you know. But we'll go five, four, three. Repeat. Eli's first repeat. <coughs> Station 19, your question. Andy is the daughter of who? But which one do you prefer, Joe? Um, I grew up watching Grey's Anatomy with my parents because... I was a spoiled rotten child and never had a bedtime, so I got to stay up past 8 p.m. when I was like seven. Four, three, two, same one. And he's only 10 now, folks. Pens exactly. down. Uh, we'll go to Papa. Uh, trick question Andy has no family. And Eli. Pruitt Herrera. That is correct. Eli does get the point. I nearly just said Captain Herrera. Like couldn't remember his first name. All right, your next question in the category in the category of Ink Master. Ink Master began airing in what year? One of Joe's favorite shows. It is. Have you ever thought about uh, becoming a tattoo artist, Joe? If I had the time and patience to really like learn how to draw, yes, I would. Um, but. I don't have the time nor the patience to sit down and become a good enough artist to be able to just be like, I will permanently mark someone. <laughs> oh, kitty. One, hands down. Let's go to Eli first. I didn't know. I just said 2008. And Papa. I also said 2008. Because our four years off, it is 2012 Ooh. when they assembled 10 of the country's best tattoo artists for season Oh, I thought one. when you were going to. I thought you were going to say when they Avengers, assemble the Avengers. There you go. Found that too. Words. I mean, they New York City. That's why they assembled the Avengers, to shut it down, but they failed. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go into our next show, which is one of our two random shows. And this is Loki. Ooh, okay. Your question in Loki. TVA stands for what? And no, it is not the band that Trey and Matt Stone started. Um... <laughs> I just don't want to spoil Loki for people who still haven't gotten a chance to see it because it's still pretty fresh. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't think this is too much of a spoiler for the show. But no. I just meant anything else I'd say about it. Yeah. It stars Loki, Tom Hiddleston. But we'll go five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And Loki's in it, folks. But let's start with uh, Upper. Uh, Tesseract Viral Affliction. And Eli. Time Variance Authority. That is correct. Well, great. Another your, reason to watch the show. It is a really good show. Yep, your, it is your sixth great. question comes in Masters of the Universe Revelations. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Smith voices which character on the show? I remember this being a, a big story when it came out, when they were, they were still in production. So I figured, why not? A five, four, three, two, one, Eli. Andra. And Papa. Skeletor. <laughs> that would have been an interesting choice. I don't want to be good. I want to be evil. I don't think Mark Hamill would have liked that choice. But. So who's right? I would have liked it. <laughs> All right, let's go to the penultimate question. God, it's like Zaddy's is here. Once upon a time, 
<laughs> oh, we got to get you a new partner. All right. Your question, who plays Lucy in Once Upon a Time? It was actually me all along. All right, Agatha, calm down. Look, if someone ever decides to pick the show about the show, they can. you could write the question, Joe Harrison makes a cameo appearance in what episode of the show about the show, and it would be valid because I make a cameo appearance. Let's just go five. <laughs> One, pens down, Eli. I It's wrong. I said Jennifer Morrison. And Papa. Uh, someone who just gave up on life. Wow. I can neither confirm nor deny that Allison Fernandez has given up on life, so I can't accept that answer. Can we search it real quick? No, we cannot. Nope. Let's go to our final question. All right, your final question comes in Superstore. Who created Superstore? It was me. I'm a capitalist now. Oh, so, so I can just punch you repeatedly for dealing with all the retail crap. Okay. <laughs> it was Harrison all along. And we are demonetized. No, I didn't say the actual title of the song. There's a title of that? Yes. Jesus Christ. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Papa West. Uh, he spoiled it. Joe Harrison. And it is JK. <laughs> Jeremy Spitzer. And Eli. Chuck Lorre. Ooh, unfortunately, no one's correct. If he didn't put Joe Harrison, Papa West would be correct. Just no, kidding. It's, it's, it is Justin Spitzer. Yes. Justin oh, Spitzer. Yes. <laughs> so close. Yes. If he didn't have Jeremy, yeah. But coming out of that, Joe, I do believe we are at 4-1, to one, Eli, in the lead. That is what I have. All right. And with that... Joe, take us into rules for round number two. All right. Round number two is going to work like this. We are going to bring up a wheel provided to us from wheeldecide.com. Each competitor will get a chance to spin at the wheel. If they like their first spin, they can keep it. If they don't like it, they can't spin again, unless, but they must keep whatever they land on the second time. Or if they land on opponents or uh, player's choice the first time, they must stick with that. In round two, we have our strength shows and just our strength shows and opponents and uh, player's choice. Uh, each show has four questions. Each question is worth two points. You can drop down to multiple choice, lowering the point value to one. And in round two, stealing is available. The player in the lead will choose rather to spend first or second. In that case, this is Eli. So, Eli, would you like to spend first or second? I'm sending good vibes to Jacob, so I'll let Jacob go first. All right. Jacob, this will be your first spin. Go ahead and spin the wheel, Joe. Amazing. I can't. I it's, it's, you have the wheels. Go ahead, spin. What the fuck do I pay you for? God, you don't pay me at all. Damn right. Well, I just want to say you look nice. Uh, you Thank have multiple you. colors. Amazing. Thank you. Spider Man: The Animated Series. Uh, we're gonna talk about this one later. Uh, wheel, uh, spin again, please. <laughs> I mean, Jacob, I love your headphones. Thank you. Look Master. at there. Yes. Thank you, Will. Look, good vibes. Good vibes. All right, your first question. Who was the first eliminated in season six? I'm going to go uh, multiple choice, please. Your multiple choice options are A, Ryan Hadley, B, Miami Burgess, C, Brian Stevens, D, M, V. Okay, so that was the uh, Master Apprentice one. Uh, can I get a repeat of the options real quick, please? Yes, you can. Your options are A, Ryan Hadley, B, Miami Burgess, C, Brian Stevens, D, M, V. Brian Stevens. That is correct for one point. 
your second question. In season eight, weeding out the week, whose canvas refused to work with them during day three, having to having them get a new canvas? Uh, multiple choice, please. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, Alishaba, B, Matt, C, Tough Tito, D, Carolyn. Alishaba. That is correct for one point. In season 10's episode, Pick Your Side, where do 24 artists arrive to try to Im and impress the masters? Coney Island. That is correct for two big points. And your last question, who took third place at the end of season 10? Rolly T-Rex. That is correct for two big points. Wow, getting six there, bringing him up to seven, that really helped him right there. All right, we are back up at four. Eli, spin. Eli, are you ready for your first spin? Lego. You get a free respin. Yay. Game of Thrones. You know what? I'm going to take it. Okay. All right, your first question. In the episode, Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things, what does Tyrion craft for Bran before leaving Winterfell? Multiple choice. I think I know it, but I need to hear it. A, a special chair. B, magic legs. B, or C, a special riding saddle. Or D, a harness for climbing. Um, it is... Um, uh, man, you, you literally just said it, and that's the one in my head. C. That is correct for one point. All right, your second question, Eli. In the episode, The North Remembers, Sansa says to Joffrey, what is it that is bad luck to do on your name day? Multiple choice. Your options are A, ordering someone's death, B, fighting, C, drinking excessively, or D, pouring. Fine. Can I get a repeat of the options? All right. Your options are A, ordering someone's death, B, e, fighting, C, drinking excessively, or D, whoring. Um, A. That is correct for one point. Third question. Miro, the second son's captain before Dario, was known by what nickname? Multiple choice, please. Your options are A, the mountain, B, the hound, C, the titan's bastard, or D, the undying. C. The titan's bastard is correct. All right, your last question. In the episode Wars to Come, shows us a young Cersei meeting a witch that gives her three questions. What was the first question she asked the witch? Oh, man. Uh, multiple choice. Your options are A, if she and the king will have children, B, will I be queen, C, will I have glory, or D, will I marry the prince? I feel like this is wrong, but if it's wrong, then Jacob would have a good seal. Um, is it if she will be queen? Jacob, you have a chance for a one-point steal. Can I hear those options? Or do I get a free repeat of the entire thing? Or You get a free repeat of the options. Okay. If I get a free repeat of the options, that'd be great. All right. Your options are A, if she and the king will have children. B, will I be queen? C, will I have glory? Or D, will I marry the prince? Hmm. 
Will her and the king have children? Also incorrect. It was, will I marry the prince was her first question. The second one was was option A, and then the third one was, will I be queen? Yeah, so, I thought it sounded familiar. But with that, I do believe, Joe, we're all tied up at seven, I do believe. Yes, we are all tied up at seven apiece. Going into round three, and round three is going to work like this. We're going to bring back up the wheel. Um, but this time, opponents and spinner's choice are off of it. It is just our strength shows. Typically, how it would work is the player behind would spin first, and each set of each show has a two set of questions in this round. Uh, the first set is a one-point question, and a two-point question, and a three-point question. The second set is a two, four, and six-point question. You just have to pick a uh, you just have to pick a set of questions that will either get you to take the lead or. Uh, Ty, but because it is all tied up, Eli, you are the higher ranked competitor going into this match. Would you like to spin first or defer? Well, it'll be it'll be whoever's the lower will go first. Oh, lower, lower, lower yes. competitor is going to go first. Yes, that's how it works. If it's tied up in round three, it's the lower right. of the two will go first, and so since they're te they're technically behind because of yep. all that, so. All right. So, Jacob, you are the lower-seated competitor. You're the lower-ranked competitor. Would you like to spin first or defer in round three? He doesn't have a choice for that. He spins I first. I do have to spin right. first. So. Yes. Nope, I'd make the rules now. <laughs> he is the captain. I, I'm sorry, folks. Me and Joe have been a while, away for a while, so let's spin the wheel. You can so respin if you don't like the first choice. All right, Will. I think oh. he's going to keep this one. Uh, I am going to keep this one. Right. Would you like uh, the first set of questions or the second set? I'm I'm feeling risky, so I'm going to go for the uh, the one, two, and three. That cannot be stolen if I miss them. All right, Jacob, your first question: Who won season two? Steve Teft. That is correct for one point. Your two point question. Sarah Miller, season two's runner-up, is from what city? Pittsburgh. That is correct for two points. And your final question. Name all three judges that have appeared on all 13 seasons. Oliver Peck, Chris Nunez, and Dave Navarro. Sweeping round three. For six big self, points. Getting himself up to 13 points making Eli have to work, but it's still a game, folks. Honestly, right. I can't miss a single question. Depending on what point value you take, but yeah. let's go with your first spin and see what it is. It is Game of Thrones. May have gone to multiple choice a lot in that second round, but I did pretty good. <sighs> Screw it. I'm going to take it. The first set or second set? Um, I'll take the first set. First question in Game of Thrones. What does Theon go by when he's captured by Ramsay? Rake. Correct for one point. Your two-point question. What actor plays Peter Baelish? Oh my goodness, I see his name, but I can't think of his last name. Repeat. All right, Eli's second repeat. What actor plays Peter Baelish? Congratulations, Jacob. Eight in English. And your winner. Moving into the fall tournament, Papa West, 
Jacob E. West. The correct answer, Aiden Gillian. Was Aiden, really really son of a, that's what I was thinking. Joe, great game going all the way into round three. Uh, what's your final thoughts before we go to post-match? Um, my final thoughts are both competitors were able to play really good. It just, you know, round two, having to go to multiple choice, uh, really hurt Eli in the end. It allowed it allowed Jacob to be able to tie it up, and then Jacob was able to uh, sweep through his round three questions, making it a very competitive game. Uh, Jacob being able to come from behind only scoring one point in round one, and then coming back and winning the match is always really it's always really exciting to see uh, come from behind victories. So it's always nice to watch. But at the same time, both competitors were able to keep it competitive in round two. And and that's always, always very nice to see as well. That it is. But with that, let's go to post-match interviews. All right, we're back. Our winner going into the tournament, Jacob E. West, Papa West. Jacob, you finally won one. You got a win under your belt to go into – the fall singles tournament to get a shot at the uh, title, uh, depending on who wins it out of Brooklyn or uh, Alec Miller, but you're in it. Uh, how you feeling with this win? You finally got that, I guess you got that pressure off your shoulder to actually get the win to go forward with your career. Yeah. You hear that? No one in my house. I amounted to something. I succeeded for once in my life. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm really happy that the wit that the wheel decided to be nice to me um, after so many, so many matches of just laughing in my face of my anguish. Um, but thank you, wheel. I love you today. Next match, I'll still love you if you uh, if you if you go my way again. I mean, you really, you really showed your strength, of course, with Ink Master. You're one of the two that really know that show, you and Joe Harrison. So, I mean, that was a real good strength for you. Eli taking a risk going with Game of Thrones, trying to take one of your strengths off, but it kind of didn't work out for him. But you were able to do very well in round two. You swept round three. And you have a very, very strong showing going into there. I mean, granted – you're still one and two, so it'll be towards like a bottom seed spot. But I mean, that's it's still it's still potential to have a clear run through it. I mean, Joe did it last did it last season going in with a negative record, and he made it all the way to the finals. So I mean, we could easily see you ride either uh, any of your strengths all the way all the way to there, depending on how it goes. But I mean, our are you, are you feeling ready? Is there anyone nervous uh, you don't want to face in the first round in the tournament? Or um, so, so, Tim, you know I am an Eagles fan, which, yes, the Cowboys do have more uh, Lombardi trophies um, in total. We've had more in the last uh, 25 years. So let's you, You've had more thing. shitty quarterbacks. Um, there, there's but, a difference, sir. The year that we won the, the Super Bowl, we had an underdog mentality um, because no because one thought Philadelphia we were is Even though now. we were the number one seed, everyone was like, they're not going to win because they're because Carson Wentz is injured. Nick Foles isn't going to do anything. Um, spoiler alert, they won the Super Bowl. They, they beat the Patriots, uh, made Tom Brady look like a little bitch. And um, then you so I'm just going to go. And look what happened. I'm going to go into this tournament. Uh, just like the Eagles went into that playoffs uh, with an underdog mentality. Probably not going to buy a dog mask, but we'll see. I might. You know, Jacob, I've never looked so happy to go into this tournament before until you had to open your mouth. Granted, I hope we are on separate sides because I would hate to face you on my side and utterly own you. So I hope we're on separate sides, and I hope we meet in the finals, and I'm going to take my Cowboys and shove them down your throat. Fun fact, even if uh, we don't face each other in the tournament, you you run this thing. You could put us together afterwards at any point, and I would love it, to hear the really, yeah, Cowboys really depends down my throat. On, yeah, it really depends on how it goes. But, yeah, I 
I will shove I will shove the Cowboys right down your throat. You you will okay. you, you will be tooting the band with me and Zadius in no time. But let's go to our unfortunate runner up in this one, Eli McKay. Eli, hi. You took the risk with Game of Thrones. Is it though? Is it a risk? Is it a risk? I think for how it played out today. Well, look, you know as well as I do when Phantom TV was one of the main things. If someone put Game of Thrones up against me, I would run the gambit. There were just a few, like these questions I just didn't know as well as I should have. So I wouldn't even say, like, and I knew the Aiden Gillian or Aiden Gillen one. And I just, like, his name just escaped me. Like, his last name escaped me. I knew his first name. I didn't. Couldn't pull his last name for some reason. Aiden English was the only name that was popping in my head. I'm like, no, that is not who we're talking about. Can we stop, please? And I, so, I had a yeah. good laugh with that when you said Aiden English. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't call it like Jacob played an amazing game. He landed on his strength and he just ran it. And, again, I wouldn't say I made a risky decision sticking with Game of Thrones. Again, if people have seen my previous matches in fandom TV – they would know, like, oh, that's not that much of a risk for Eli anyway. It's just the questions weren't on my side. Yeah. And, I mean, unfortunately, this will end the singles side for you for this season. But we still have a few tag matches coming in after the championship. So we could we could still see you and Zadius uh, get back in there, which I'll explain later after this video what happened with the uh, video confusion from last weekend, if anyone's paying attention. I'll explain later. But... Uh, I mean, Eli. There's there's still plenty of time to come back from this. I know I know you will. I mean, you know. So I'm a comeback kid for a reason. Like, no matter how um, no matter how hard you push me down or like I get beaten up, I always try to find a way to make a comeback or try to get myself like Steve Rogers. Like, just knock me down. Like I can do this all day. Like I you know. You're not going to keep me down long enough to fully defeat me. And sure, I'm 0-2, but, I mean, there were so many other competitors that started with a negative record that were able to come back the next season and make a make a comeback. So, yeah, that's, that's my plan next season. If I'm allowed to play next season, like, that's the that's plan. You'll, you'll be allowed. There's, well, thank you. Yes, you're, <laughs> there's none of that. None of that other stuff, the other divisions. But uh, anyways, let's start back up to Joe up at the desk and myself to close us out. Joe, very close game. Jacob coming away with that big win to boost him into the tournament. Um, me and you were both already in the tournament, of course, with our records. And just for funsies, I put everything together just to see how it would face up before we had this match. And, of course, with Carrie and Chase, we still have to have the, to fit how they were in there. But before this match, it was going to be me and you facing off in the first round. All right. How does yes. it shape up now? So, uh, I don't know how it's going to shape up now. I don't think that's going to happen. But we'll have to, we'll have to see once I do the number stuff which I probably should have done, just had you do the interviews, and I could have had a bigger picture. But, you know, I'll have it ready for next video. But um, exciting match, Joe. Um, both of these guys played to the top of their game. I mean, Eli came out with the advantage in round one. Round two went more Jacob's way. And, of course, round three. Ink Masters, just one of those, just one of those strengths that a few people know, and they know them well. Yep. That is true. I believe I have not yet, besides myself and Jacob, there isn't really other people. So the show isn't getting that deep yet, but it will eventually if Jacob and I keep hitting it. Um, but yeah. yeah, and it was very smart. I agree with Eli. It wasn't really a risky decision. It was a very calculated decision. He usually runs the gambit with Game of Thrones. It just happened to be, and sometimes it happens, even if it's a show you know, there's just some knowledge and information that didn't really stick with you, and that's what happened. Unfortunately, knowledge that hadn't stuck with him happened to be the questions that were being asked today, and mm -hmm. what happened, and we've seen it happen before, the wrong name, or the, the, and it happened to me in my last match, the wrong name jumped to the front of my head, and I just blurted it out, and because of that, there was nothing I could do about it, and it, mm -hmm. and it unfortunately cost us the match, and that's what happened today, too. Is 
is just simply blurting out the, the name that stuck to the front of your head instead of trying to think a little bit instead of being able to just kind of get back in there, reel it in. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. But I'm excited to see what Jacob is able to do in the tournament. Maybe we'll see another run like last time with someone with a low seed being able to run all the way to the finals. That would be interesting to see. And like you said, I'm excited to see if Eli come back in teams. I'm mm -hmm. not sure who he's going to be facing. I think there are a couple teams that are also one and one, so he'll be facing one of those. Yeah, um, it, it'll be it'll be a number one contendership once we get the championship crown. <laughs> come later, a little bit towards the end of the tournament, and we'll have uh, the tournament winner face champion, and of course the teams number one face the teams champion to give us a couple title matches towards the end of the year for December to give everyone a nice Christmas gift, you know. All right, sounds good, but. Yeah, I have no other further thoughts unless you have some thoughts. I say let's get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I have no other thoughts. It was a great match today. We'll see how these guys do in their futures. But for myself and Joe, for Jacob and Eli, this has been TV Throwdown. We will see you in the next episode. Continue watching all the multiplex entertainment content. And, of course, continue watching TV. We thank you for the support. We thank and cherish it. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.